Welcome back to the News at 10. A meeting between President Muhammad Buhari and governors of the All Progressive Congress has just ended at the presidential villa in Abuja. The meeting, which was held behind closed doors, comes hours after the president presided over the National Council of States meeting. At the end of the meeting, the chairman of the APC Governors Forum and Imo State Governor Rocha Sokorocha told State House correspondents that the governors unanimously asked the president to seek re-election in 2019. But well, the president wants them to give him more time before he makes his intentions known. He also wants more time to hear from more Nigerians before finally taking a decision. The president had earlier in the month met with the governors when he was in his hometown in Dora, Katsina State. Let's take a look at some sports news now. Here's Ayot Sunde Balogo. Betway, the premium online sports betting experience, is now live in Nigeria. Time now for some sports news. Nigeria has finalized her roster for the first leg of the 2019 FIBA World Cup qualifiers in Bamako, Mali. Ike Diogu, who led Nigeria in scoring at the FIBA AfroBasket Championships in 2013 and 2017, is set to lead a team that also includes Michael Efebora. Efebora powered Nigeria's offense with a team-high 17.4 points per game in the 2009 AfroBasket in Libya. Nigeria will face Uganda, hosts Mali and Rwanda as the race for China 2019 begins on February the 23rd. The league management company, LMC, has reminded clubs of the need to ensure better playing pitches in the ongoing 2017-2018 Nigeria Professional Football League season. This followed a two-week ban on the Oweri, Umahia, Damaturu and Lokoja stadiums owing to poor playing surfaces. LMC chairman Shiro Diko explained that the body will ensure strict adherence to the rules at all times. Well, the Super Falcons of Nigeria will compete in an eight-nation competition tagged Alanya Women's Tournament in Turkey, and that's in April. Mexico, Romania, Ukraine, France and Slovakia are the other countries to have confirmed their participation in the competition. It will also be Nigeria's first series of matches outside Africa since the 2015 Women's World Cup. The competition will be the Super Falcons' second in 2018, following the ongoing inaugural Wafu Women's Cup in Côte d'Ivoire. Desiree Ellis has been appointed permanent coach of South Africa senior women's soccer team Bayana Bayana. Ellis has been in charge of the Bayana Bayana on an interim basis since 2016 after the Rio Olympic Games and now takes over from former coach Vera Paul. The president of the South Africa Football Association, Danny Yodan, said Desiree has been mandated to qualify for the 2018 African Women's Nations Cup in Ghana, qualify for the 2019 FIFA World Cup and the 2020 Olympics. That's a wrap in sports news. The news at 10 continues shortly. Betway, the premium online sports betting experience, is now live in Nigeria. Thanks, Ayotunde. Nigeria will be hosting journalists across the world in June as the International Press Institute holds its 2018 World Congress in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. The director of the International Press Institute explains that the Congress will encourage exchange of best practices among journalists from around the world, especially when covering sensitive reports like politics. The theme for the 2018 Congress is Why Journalism Matters, Quality Media for Strong Societies. She's expected to visit some leading media houses in Nigeria, including Channels Television. We look at um, hate speech, one of the increases of freezing. Um, hate speech has become common in the words of many of our political leaders. How can we cover this uh, without repeating this type of hate speech? And, uh, and, and how can we also ensure that the news media is not going to disseminate hate speech, and yet this, this does not become a way from 
anybody who is sitting in government uh, or this position to clamp down on press freedom. So basically understand what are the limits of press freedom from a legislative perspective. This, this, this will be a, a core aspect of really trying to understand how can we ensure that the that quality, public interest in journalism is also financially viable. The final goal is, yes, to to encourage dialogues at the global level and encourage an exchange of best practices. Syrian government forces have carried out a new wave of air and artillery strikes on the besieged rebel-held eastern Ghouta region. According to a monitoring group, the attack has left at least 33 civilians dead, bringing the number killed since Sunday to 382. The UN says about 393,000 people in Ghouta are trapped in, quote, hell on earth. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council in New York is meeting to discuss a draft resolution on Syria calling for a 30-day nationwide truce. But Russia's UN representative who presented amendments for the resolution says no agreement on the draft has been reached. And the main news again. There was a new twist today on the missing students from Girls Science and Technical College in Dabchi as the Yobe state government made a U-turn on its claim that the missing students had been found, saying the information was not correct. In a statement, the government apologized for sending out the wrong information, explaining that it was misled by a security agency on the matter. Also today, the National Council of State met in Abuja, where it called for an increase in agriculture funding and quick military action to end the farmers and herdsmen crisis in the country. And the Syrian government forces today carried out new waves of air and artillery strikes on rebel-held eastern Ghouta region. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Do have a good night.